Hello, and thanks for joining us here at the Potawatomi Zoo. I'm Josh Sisk, Executive Director, and on this Zoo to You, we are going to highlight an animal that I'm probably guessing that most of you don't even know we have here at the zoo. And it honestly can be almost argued as one of the most critically endangered species that we actually even have here at the zoo. Um, if you're familiar with our Australia section, when you come in and you see the uh, honey eater birds in the aviary, this is a, a little mammal that lives down on the ground there. Um, so before I uh, say what this animal is, I'm gonna introduce you to their keeper, uh, Lauren. Hi guys. Um, so here today we have our brush-tailed baton. So this is Hallie. Um, and like Josh mentioned, it's really awesome that we have her. She is possibly our most critically endangered species that we have here at the zoo. You want a book? So what's really cool about these guys um, is they are in the marsupial family. So they are very similar in the same order, but different class from your kangaroos and your wallabies. So she, when she is out on exhibit, most of you probably don't realize she's there because she does live under our blue faced honey eaters who are in this enclosure with us right now. Um, see, right? So these are the birds that you would see when you're first walking into the Australia exhibit. She lives down on the ground um, in the same exhibit with them. So these guys are a nocturnal species meaning that they are the most active in the evening. Do you want to target? Good. So she is usually only out at night, so the public almost never gets to see her because she is never out during daytime hours for the most part when you guys are here, except when we go out and feed her, which we usually try to time it out um, to be early enough in the morning when you guys are here so that you can see her. So out in the wild, these guys would eat a lot of fungus. Um, so that would be the majority of their diet out in the wild. But what I'm feeding her right now are some bugs, so some mealworms, waxworms, superworms. She also just got her diet for the day. She, here at the zoo, gets a pelleted diet. It's pretty similar probably to what you would feed uh, your dogs and cats at home. There's also some lettuce, sweet potato, apple in there. She particularly likes her fruit, but the bugs are definitely her favorite. These guys are from Australia. So now they can only mostly be found in the western and southern parts of the continent. Their numbers have decreased quite significantly over the years. Unfortunately, in the early 1900s, red foxes were introduced to Australia and they quickly decimated the Batong population. Um, so their numbers decreased so significantly that they were listed as endangered. Eventually, they got those populations under control of red foxes. Um, so the numbers on these guys began to rise in the later 1900s. Uh, so they were taken off the IUCN red list and then unfortunately in the late 1900s wild cat, feral cat populations grew significantly and they again decimated the population. Um, so these guys were once again in the early 2000s listed as critically endangered and they remain that way today. So for your part at home, please if you have cats, spay or neuter. They can do a lot of damage to wild native populations. As I mentioned before, these guys are in the marsupial family. So even though they look like maybe a rat or a small bunny, um, if you look at the feet as Josh zooms in on her, she has these nice long feet similar to kangaroos. So she does bounce around on those hind feet like a kangaroo and rears up on them similar to them. She also does have a pouch. So if she were to give birth, she would have joeys. They would climb into the pouch just like a kangaroo. So it's very important that we have these guys for the species um, survival plan. So even though you guys can't often see them, zoos do breed them. Here at our zoo, we only have just Hallie, our one female. Um, these guys only live to about four or six years of age in the wild, but in human care with a lot of vet checkups, they can live to be into their teens. So Hallie, is, she just turned 13 earlier this month, so we do not have a mate for her. She's a little bit older. But it is very important that zoos breed these guys to be able to reintroduce back into the wild eventually. All right, so you guys, you got to meet uh, Hallie the Batong. Um, we are in the back area. Temperatures are starting to warm up, so these guys will start getting back out on exhibit. When we get you guys here at the zoo, uh, you'll be able to uh, check these guys out. But like Lauren said, Hallie's probably, she's going to be asleep uh, during the day. But, you know, a lot of people ask, well, then why do you have them? Um, you know, they're critically endangered, and they're part of a species survival plan here at the zoo. And, you know, even though the public can't see them, it's something that we can take part in to help uh, the sustainability of this species. So, all right. Well, thanks again, Lauren. Thanks, Haley, for participating today, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.